What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about a very important moment in your life when you first start your business. Now, when you first start your business, this is going to be the roughest part of your life. Once again, you're starting your business, you're going out to the marketplace, looking for customers, you have a product, you have a service, you have something that you want to put out. and getting customers is going to be the hardest part of your journey and this is something that why template businesses your turo airbnb amazon fba one of these things is because they remove that whole process of getting customers because they already have customers. And then you have to take a product or service and put it on their website. And this right here is the hardest part because there are so many people who are looking to start a business, looking to become involved in commerce and looking to put things out, looking to do things. And this right here is one of the scariest, one of the darkest places because you can't talk to your friends about it. They don't have businesses. So they really not going to have any orientation to what you're doing, what you're working on, what you're trying to start. And this right here can be a very difficult and it can be a very harsh environment because it's just you and maybe your business partner who are trying to go out and to wrap up business, to establish business, to get clients to come in and to use your products or services and to pay you. So. This is what I call the blind spot, because when you start a business, I don't care how much research you've done. Your business is going to throw something at you that you have no awareness of. You weren't prepared. I'll give you an example. When I did the car rental business, I had no clue that people would keep my cars, not pay me and ignore me. Didn't see that coming had no clue that someone would rent my car on one day and then sell it the next day. Had no clue. And I did tons and tons of research. And I will say, because a lot of people were not putting out honest evaluations and honest critiques, this is why a lot of this information was missing because I'm not the first one this happened to. I was just the first one to talk about it online. So when you get into a business, because you know my projections, they look great. I sat down, I calculated them on payments, paper, and it was like, you know, it was looked like on paper, on paper, the business looked great. But in real life, the business sucked. And that's what some of you are going to run into. Some of you are going to start a business and it's going to be very much like what you imagine because you did some research. It's not a crazy industry and you're just going to go ahead and start your business and make your money. Then there are going to be other ones who are going to experience what I experienced with the car rental business of setting up a business and having it being a complete nightmare. I'm going to tell you what I did with the car rental business. After six months, I decided to shut that bad boy down. I shut it down. I stopped renting cars. And at that point, I started to sell those cars. And this this was a year and a half ago. I have four cars left out of 31. So it's been a long, arduous process. But many of you who are going to get into that situation, you may choose to stick with it if you really like the business. And this is some, I, I didn't like the car rental business. Didn't like it at all, was not a fan of it. Didn't like it. So it was real easy for me to cut ties with it. But essentially, I've got some news for you and I got something to say to you. If you start a business and it turns into a complete dumpster, a nightmare, there's no harm in getting rid of that business. Let me tell you something. Years and years ago when I was in the military, I started not one, not two, not three, not four, but five different businesses that completely failed. Didn't make any money, didn't work out, didn't do nothing. And frankly, I was somewhat devastated because I didn't understand about the blind spot. I didn't understand that there are so many things that go into making a successful business that I didn't understand, didn't know about, was completely unaware of. And this may be you, this may be one of the things that you would have to deal with. This may be one of your situations that you're 
having to shape up because unless you have a bunch of friends who are business owners, which would be good because they can tell you a lot of things to expect. They can tell you that getting paid for some businesses can be a problem. These businesses who do work and then they'll do the work first and then it's like you pay them later. And a close friend, he said, I spend a third of my time getting my business. I spend a third of time managing my business and I spend a third of my time collecting my money. So that was working out with him. But once again, do not be afraid to try again. And this is my message to you because there are so many businesses out there. There are so many things you can do. There are so many things you can get yourself involved in. There's so many things you can start up. There's so many. And everyone wants to start a business, have everything go correctly and be 100% certain, but that doesn't happen. That doesn't really happen. So what I want you to do, I want you to go ahead and start mentally preparing yourself for whatever you want to do. Now, this is what everyone loves. They love a done for you business, a business that they can roll into. All of the particulars and stuff are mapped out and you can just do that. And I don't really have anything like that for you. Sorry, that's just where I'm at. I don't have anything like that for you, but I do have a lot of advice. I have a lot of skill sets. I've been through a lot in the business arena that can help you. And one of the things that I want to say to you is let go of short form, short content success. This is what everyone's looking for. They're looking for something that they can go ahead and start. They're looking for something that they can go ahead and build. They're looking for something that they can go ahead and set off and will be instantaneously successful, will make money and do all of the things that they want done. The reality is for you to go ahead and have that business that works really well and some of you will start a business and it will start clicking. And some of you, it's just not going to click and you're going to go back and examine what's wrong with this business, what's wrong with my approach, what happened in my whole system. And that's going to be challenging and that's going to be somewhat harsh. And one of the things that I want you guys to realize is this is normal. It's normal for people to start a business that they've never done before and for it to be harsh. That's normal, that's regular. What's not normal is for someone who's never started a business, they don't know anything, and for it to take off and become wildly successful. And that happens, that happens. But what I'm here to tell you is the starting of your business is gonna be the hardest part. And this is why a lot of people try to cheat. Now, what do I mean by cheating? They'll go ahead and get their LLC, business bank account, EIN, maybe business credit card, and they're like, ooh, we, I'm in business. Not exactly. You have set up the framework of your business, congratulations, but until you get customers that come to your business and pay you, you're not in business. And we have a lot of pretenders, a lot of people who think they're in business, a lot of people who assume they're in business because they have the LLC, the EIN, the business checking account, and perhaps the business credit card. And there's a thought process that these people are in business, making money, doing the things that they need to do when actually they haven't even started their business. Yes, you have framework, you have paperwork, congratulations. But until you go out and get customers that pay you on a regular basis, you have not correctly started your business. And one of the things that you have to look at in this whole rim of starting businesses is getting customers, which can be the scariest, which can be the hardest things. Like, let me explain to you what happened to me in the car rental business. I was working with a company by the name of Hire Car and I was renting out cars. My car stayed rented, but my customers were terrible. Let me go ahead and kind of break this down. My customers were poor. My customers did not have the ability to finance a car. So they were poor, they had bad credit, and they didn't have a lot of money. So this made them a particularly harsh customer base to deal with, made them a particularly harsh customer base to service because this right here is going to sound extremely dismissive and it's going to sound some aggressive i need to put that out but 
I have a theory, and this is my theory, that who you are from a financial standpoint is who you will be in the rest of your life. Now, what does that mean? If you are really bad with money, sloppy with money, very careless with money, the chances of you being that same way with other things is quite high. And one of the things that happened with me, and I was watching a video of a guy who was at the car a lot, and he went over to these repos, and all these repo cars were stained, nasty, filthy, dirty. And there's a correlation between who you are as a person and the results that you get out of doing whatever you're doing. And I feel that they're closely related. So what I'm saying is, if you are a sloppy, poor, mismanaging person with money, chances of you being a dirty, filthy person are quite high. And once again, when you get in business and you're dealing with audiences, you do not want to deal with a particularly harsh audience. Drug dealers, their audience is extremely harsh. Their, drug, their audience is junkies. Their audience are people who are addicted to drugs. Their audience are people who live on the streets. Their audience are people who turn tricks. Very bad audience, but because they like being drug dealers, and I say this, I don't think anyone is forced into dealing drugs. I don't think it's forced. I think that they like that lifestyle. They like the aggressiveness. They like the ability to make money outside of the system. So they're not forced. They choose to do this stuff. And this is, they chose to have, in my opinion, a very bad customer base where a lot of crazy stuff can happen. So once again, you start a business like hire a car, renting cars, and this is something like literally my first two months were good and then the next four months were horrible. And at the sixth month, I decided I was getting out of the car rental business because it was just terrible, just terrible. And some of this could happen to you. You can start a business where you can have bad clients, you can have bad outcomes. And from me to you, if you make the decision to exit that business and get out that business, I believe that's 100% fine. Because once again, I was in the military. I started not one, not two, not three, not four, but five businesses that all failed. And I didn't understand why, but after that, I didn't do anything from a business standpoint. When I got out, I tried to start a lawn care service. That didn't work because I didn't know what I was doing. And then from that point on, I worked a job for nine years. Did not try to start a business, did not try to do anything. I worked a regular job for nine years because I was burnt out, hurt, just messed up. Because here's the thing, education is extremely important when you start a business. And this is like the more education, the more research you get, the better position you will be to run your business. Now this will not prepare you for everything, but it will give you more momentum, more energy, more stuff to deal with the things that your business is, your business is gonna throw a lot at you. It's gonna throw a lot at you. And one of the things that you have to realize is if you start the right business that's right for your chi, so to speak, and I'll, I'll explain that. Right now, there's a ton of template businesses that are saying, come here, come here, get into this business, get in this business. And that business may be, not be in alignment with who you are as a person. And my advice to you is to get into a business that vibes well with who you are as a person because your business takes off, you start making a lot of money, you're not gonna feel bad. You're not gonna feel out of sorts. You're not gonna feel terrified. You're gonna be in a really good position to enjoy what you have built because you enjoy the business, you enjoy the clients. Years ago on YouTube, I used to be in the resale space. And then one day it got really bad in the retail space. It got bad with my, these people were not customers. They was like, Glendon, I'll just be here for your free information. I'm never buying your book. I'm never buying your courses. They would literally tell me that in the comment sections because there was a lot of people who was unhappy that I was doing as well as I was. They were very, very unhappy. They just couldn't deal with it. So they told me to my face that, hey, I'll just be here for your free information. I will never ever pay you. And it got worse and worse and worse and people started to have hangouts and people started to have conversations. Then one day I said, fine, I'm leaving. I'm gonna do something else. 
I gave away a Facebook group, I had a particularly large Facebook group, I gave that away. As some other stuff I gave away and I just began making business content because your audience is gonna be a very important part of your success. And if you like your audience, which I hope you do, I hope you, because your audience, these people give you what, give you the money, they buy your products, they make you what you are. So hopefully you enjoy them and you like them and you enjoy the whole process of having this audience because if you don't enjoy it and you don't enjoy the audience, your business is gonna be a nightmare. I can speak, it's a testimony from being someone in the car rental business because it was a complete other nightmare. And one of the things, I was only in that business six months before I quit. I let them know I was out. They had a program that was part of that was like 1500 bucks per month. And I remember particularly, the guy was like, could you pay? And I was like, I stopped renting cars three months ago. I am not gonna pay you any money for this program that I'm not using. And recently they have filed bankruptcy. And I'm gonna tell you why. Their customer base is terrible. And these are not like horrible people or rotten people, but the customer base is terrible. It's just strictly terrible. And one of the things I would advise you is to stay away from terrible customer bases. And this is one of the things that you will find when you start renting cars on Turo. This is one of the things you will find when you start renting houses on Airbnb, that some of your customers are not so nice and they will mess up. A mechanic that used to fix my cars, he had an Airbnb in Tennessee. He had someone stay in it and they refused to leave and they did $30,000 worth of damage to his Airbnb. Once again, sloppy people, sloppy lives. This is a norm, this is a norm. I consistently see this. So that's all I got for you guys today. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you get the money management course because we got a lot of stuff that's gonna go down in May. And the money management course is gonna be a big part of it. So it's gonna be in the description or it'll be in the first comment. So be sure to get this. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'm here today. I'll probably be here tomorrow. I'll probably be here for 10 years from now and I will see you guys in the next video.